let's look at the 3D cursor a little bit more. We're going to step this up and start moving the 3D cursor around so that we can control it a little bit. So first things first, let's talk about the 3D cursor. I'm going to show you where the 3D cursor lives in the space. It, sh it shows up at the origin point. So X, Y, and Z, it's always in the center. We can move it around, and we want to move it around. Um, the way that you can when you start using this tool is go to the cursor tool, and then you can kind of click. And what's smart about this is that it knows that as long as there's a plane in your view, it will put it onto the most, like the closest, uh, pardon me, the closest face of that plane. So if I wanted to try to just select this face of that um, spear, I can go ahead and just click with that uh, tool selected, and it'll move the 3D cursor to the closest face underneath my click. I'm just using my scroll wheel and my shift plus middle mouse button to zoom in and navigate around the space. And it got, a, it got pretty close at getting to that space. Now that's with the uh, tool selected. I want to show you how to do that without having the tool selected because it, I, you know, always going all the way up over here, coming back after a while, it just takes too much time. So I want that face selected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press and hold shift and I'm going to right click on that face. And that gets us pretty close to the center of that face to move the 3D cursor. You might be asking, okay, Chris, you've said that it's important to be able to move this, that we want to be able to move it. Why? Well, as you recall, you can put things where the 3D cursor is. You can move things to the 3D cursor. That's new. So I'm going to go ahead and add something new. I'll add a little uh, orb here, a little sphere and I'm going to shrink it down, but the origin of that sphere is going to show up right here on that, uh, on the surface of this face. So shift A, mesh, UV sphere, and then I'm going to scale it down right away. And so now I've got this uh, sphere just kind of sitting right on this cube. And that's because I put the 3D cursor there, and wherever the 3D cursor is, is where objects that are added to a scene go. All right, let's go ahead and kind of keep playing with that. There's a thing inside Blender called the Pi menu. Now, Pi menus are these radial menus that allow you to change things. I want to send my 3D cursor to the center of this specific face of this cylinder. I'm going to just kind of or orbit around here. Now, I'm not talking about sending it to the origin point of this cylinder. I want to send it to this, the center of this particular face. So in order to do that, I need to use the Pi menu to send the 3D cursor to what's selected. I need to select it too. But let's talk about the Pi menu. Shift plus S. So we've hit Shift A. We've hit Shift D. Shift A adds something new. Shift D duplicates what's selected. Shift S gives us our first radio menu that I've talked about in this course, and that is this little 3D cursor menu. So I want to send the 3D cursor, this thing right here, to the selected object. Well, it's going to send it to that selected object, but it's going to send it to the origin point. Right? So that's not great. I got there, but I'm, you know, I'm not exactly where I want to be. So have a think. How would I select just this face? If you thought to yourself, go into edit mode, go into face mode, and then select the face, you would be correct. If you didn't think that, well, now you've got that new skill. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift S now and say cursor to selected. And now that cursor is perfectly on that face. Now the benefit of this is I can put a monkey right on the head of this. And so there's something cultural about Blender that you should know about. When I hit Shift A, under Mesh, one of the options that's been there right since day one is a monkey. And it's called Suzanne. So when I click on this, Suzanne shows up. Oh, hi, Suzanne. But I need to scale Suzanne, so I'm going to hit S and scale it and GZ to move it up just a little bit. But now Suzanne is sitting on top of my cylinder, and I got there by using the 3D cursor. Well, let's do a couple more things with the 3D cursor, and we're going to um, call it a day on that one. There's so much to do with it. 
uh, and I use it a lot when I'm playing with things like curves or just moving objects around to make sure they're, they're touching each other. So let's say <clears throat> that I want this object here to share the same space as this object. Uh, what I'll do is I'll click on this object first. I'll hit Shift S and I'll say cursor to selected. All right, so that moves my 3D cursor from the top of this cylinder to this. And now I want to move the origin of this object to the 3D cursor. What I'll do is I'll, with this object selected, hit Shift S, and now I get selection to cursor. So this is selected, it's gonna go to my cursor. And there we are. And now I can just scale this up a little bit so I have that cube kind of hanging out with the icosphere. Pretty neat. So again, as a recap, Shift S gets us to our 3D cursor. Our 3D cursor is directly related to the origin point of the objects that are selected. So if I want an object to go to a very specific point, I can go ahead and select that point, hit Shift S, and then cursor to selected. Now my 3D cursor goes up there. Now the next new thing that I add can go there, but I can also say take the origin of this torus and move it to this very tip by going Shift S and Selection to Cursor. And now I've got this kind of perfect cool relationship here with the cone and the torus. All right, I know that that was a lot. We're dealing with origin points. We're dealing with the, the um, cursor, the 3D cursor menu. We, you should be able to not have to go up here, but to shift right click to move the cursor where you want. You should be able to use the shift S to move the cursor to selected or move a selected item to cursor.